What's up, everybody? Welcome to Sports Magazine Collector. I'm Brad, and today we're going to count down the top 20 Sports Illustrated covers of the 1970s. All right, if you haven't already heard my criteria on these countdowns, be sure to check out the first part of my 1970s list, which covered numbers 40 through 21. But for now, we're going to go ahead and jump right into the list from the top Sports Illustrated covers of the 1970s. Kicking us off at number 20, it's Pistol Pete Maravich. Pete Maravich has been on three Sports Illustrated covers. The first two both appeared on the countdown for the top covers of the 1960s. And here's his third. This is from 1973. It's his first pro cover. And this comes in at 20 on our list for top issues of the 1970s. So Pistol Pete Maravich, he's one of the most collectible athletes of all time. He's just a super unique athlete. Uh, there really has never been another basketball player quite like him. So uh, even though he passed away in the 80s, his legend really continues to carry on. He's a Hall of Famer. He was a five-time All-Star in the NBA. He won a scoring title. Um, he is the all-time leading scorer for NCAA men's college basketball history. He averaged 44 points per game, and he only played three seasons because freshmen were not allowed to play varsity at the time. It was also before the three-point line and the shot clock. So this issue has been graded only four times, and the current leader is a 9.4. Number 19, it's Larry Bird. This is his second Sports Illustrated cover out of 21 total times that he appeared. This is from 1979, and as you can see, He's still in his college uniform with the Indiana State Sycamores. So Indiana State, uh, mid-major, they had just joined the Missouri Valley Conference, which they're still a part of. And it was a big deal for Larry Bird to lead them to the Final Four. And as most of us know, they would go on to the championship game where they would face off against Magic Johnson and Michigan State. Uh, Larry Bird, he's an all-time great Hall of Famer. 12 all-star time, uh, 12 all-star appearances. He was a three-time NBA MVP. He won three championships. Twice he was the finals MVP. And he comes in at number seven on ESPN's all-time greatest basketball list. So this issue has been graded a total of nine times, and the current leader is a 9.2. Number 18, it's Pittsburgh Steelers legend Terry Bradshaw. This is his first ever Sports Illustrated cover. He appeared on the cover a total of six times. This is from 1970, and he's actually still in his college uniform with Louisiana Tech. So the headline says everybody's number one pick. This was right before he got drafted to go to the Steelers. And uh, Terry Bradshaw had a great career. He's in the Hall of Fame. He won four Super Bowls, and twice he was the Super Bowl MVP. He's also now currently pretty well known as an analyst. He's been a co-host of uh, Fox NFL pregame shows since 1994, and he's actually won three Emmys as a studio analyst so this issue has only been graded eight times and the current leader is a 9.2 number 17 it's third baseman mike schmidt this is his very first sports illustrated cover he appeared on a total of six this is from 1976 and mike schmidt he's one of the greatest if not the greatest third baseman of all time he's in the hall of fame 12 time all-star he won three mvp awards he did win a world series he also won the World Series MVP, finished his career with 548 home runs. He also won 10 gold gloves. So um, the issue here says the big blast off home run, um, home run champ, Mike Schmidt. And so he was a slugger and he's actually one of only 18 players in MLB history to hit four home runs in a single game. This issue has only been graded eight times and the current leader is a 9.2. And number 16, it's Hammerin' Hank Aaron from 1970. This is his second Sports Illustrated cover. Hank Aaron appeared on the cover six times, and uh, he's an all-time great Hall of Famer, MVP, 21-year All-Star. He won three gold gloves, two batting titles. He won a World Series. He's third all-time in hits, second all-time in home runs. He's the all-time leader in RBIs and total bases, and he's number three on ESPN's all-time greatest list, only behind Willie Mays and Babe Ruth. Now, this is a very, very unique and interesting cover. So as you can see, there are actually nine people pictured on this cover. All nine are Hall of Famers. And of the nine, seven of them, this is their first Sports Illustrated cover. So like I said, this is Hank Aaron's, and he's the primary feature of this cover. It's his second cover. Uh, you've also got Stan Musial. It's not his first. He was on several. But listen to these other names. And this is the first cover for all these guys. Ty Cobb. Eddie Collins, Triz Speaker, Paul Wayner, Honus Wagner, Nap Lajaway, and Cap Anson. That is really, really cool. I'm pretty sure that this is the most Hall of Famers uh, to all share their first cover on a single issue of any 
of any cover in the history of Sports Illustrated. It's just really unique. And so at the time, what happened here is Hank Aaron had hit his 3,000th career hit. He was only the ninth person at that time to join that club. And these were the other guys who had done it so far. So most of them, obviously, their playing careers were way before Sports Illustrated uh, released their first issue in 1954, other than Stan Musial. Uh, so, you know, they had never been on the cover until this issue. And I think that makes this really cool. I mean, honestly, even just with it being Hank Aaron's second cover, that's extremely collectible in itself. But that's just kind of some, uh, you know, sugar. Uh, that, that's kind of the cherry on top, um, a little extra sugar on top, um, just to have these extra sports uh, legends and Hall of Famers with their first cover on there. Super cool. It's only been graded five times, and the current leader is a 9.0. Number 15, it's Dr. J, Julius Irving. Look at this awesome cover. You've got the fro. You've got the red, white, and blue ABA basketball. This is actually while Dr. J was still playing in the ABA. This is from 1976. It's his second Sports Illustrated cover. Dr. J is the only ABA player ever to be featured on the cover of Sports Illustrated, and he actually did it twice. So that just shows you how awesome Dr. J was. One of the greatest dunkers of all time. Um, he's in the Hall of Fame. He made 16 all-star teams, three-time ABA MVP, one-time NBA uh, MVP. He won two ABA championships. He won one NBA championship, and he's listed at number 15 on ESPN's all-time greatest list. So uh, Dr. J is just absolutely amazing, and he is uh, he, he was featured on the cover eight times. Like I said, his first two were with the ABA. This is his second. And uh, second covers, you know, a lot of times have collectability for big time athletes. So that's a little bit of this, but then also is just the awesomeness of the image. Like I said, with the Afro and the, the ABA basketball, just really sweet shot of Dr. J there. So this issue has only been graded four times and the current leader is a 9.2. Number 14, check out this cover, Babe Ruth, the great Bambino, the Sultan of SWAT. This is pretty cool. 1954, as we know, was the very first time that uh, Sports Illustrated released an issue. Babe Ruth played in the 1910s, 1920s, and 1930s. He was on seven Sports Illustrated covers. So that's pretty impressive considering that his career ended two decades before Sports Illustrated even came out, but he's been on seven covers. And so that just shows you how big of an athlete, how big of an icon Babe Ruth is. And this is his very first Sports Illustrated cover. This is from 1974. Now, usually, and I've said this before, when you have um, more modern covers of athletes and it's way after their playing days, it's not as collectible. Now, even though this isn't really modern in, modern in today's sense, 1974, this is about a 50-year-old cover, um, it was modern in terms of when Babe Ruth played. Came out, um, you know, what, 40 years after he after his career was over. But this is a unique instance because Babe Ruth is Babe Ruth. Um, he's he's widely considered the greatest baseball player of all time. And the fact that this first cover is from 1974, like I said, that's not modern in today's uh, in, in, in today's perspective. This is a 50 year old cover. So this comes up high on the list just because of the stature of Babe Ruth. He is a Hall of Famer. He only won one MVP award, um, which we'll talk about in a second, but he did win seven World Series. He has 714 home runs, which is third all time. He won 12 home run titles. He won an ERA title as a pitcher. He's the all-time leader in slugging percentage, OPS, and war, and he comes in at number one on ESPN's all-time greatest list. So like I said, he only won one MVP award. If you take a closer look into that, they did not give out an MVP award between 1915 and 1921. And then um, from 22 to 29, which is basically the prime of his career, they would not allow a repeat winner of the MVP. So once you had won it once, you couldn't win it again. So even though he's only officially got one, um, you know, if you consider some of those facts, he probably would have been closer to eight or 10 um, absolute all time legend. So really cool, even though it's quite a bit after his playing days. Still a 50-year-old cover, 1974, Babe Ruth's very first. Also, I love the fact that it's just an old-school black-and-white shot of the Babe swinging the bat. Um, really awesome issue. Only five copies have been graded, and the current leader is a 9.6. Number 13, The Magic Show. Irvin Johnson leads Michigan State to the title. Irvin Johnson, better known as 
Magic. So this is Magic Johnson's second Sports Illustrated cover. This is from 1979. As you can see, he's still in his college uniform with Michigan State. This is from the national title game whenever Magic Johnson and Michigan State took on Larry Bird and Indiana State with Magic and Michigan State coming out on top. So really cool cover here. You've got Magic Johnson, uh, you know, jumping up and jamming on that player from Indiana State. Uh, really unfortunate co cover for that Indiana State player. It's not Larry Bird, one of his teammates. And uh, yeah, that would be the definition of a poster right there. And it's plastered right on the Sports Illustrated cover. Magic was on 29 total covers of Sports Illustrated. He is a Hall of Famer, 12-time All-Star. He won three MVPs. He was a five-time NBA champion, and he won three of those finals MVPs. And he comes in at number five on ESPN's all-time greatest list. He was also a member of the 1992 Dream Team, and he's widely considered to be the greatest point guard of all time. So awesome cover here. It's Magic Johnson's second, and this has been graded 12 times, with the current leader being a 9.6. Number 12, this is a cool one. It's not a great cover because of any human but because of the greatest racehorse of all time, this is Secretariat. This is 1973, the only time that Secretariat ever appeared on a Sports Illustrated cover. And Sports, uh, I'm sorry, Secretariat was a legend. So listen to this, 1973 Triple Crown winner, and Secretariat still holds the fastest time record in all three of those races. That is absolutely astounding, considering that that was 50 years ago and still has the record in all three races. Secretariat won the Belmont Stake by 31 links. And how about this? There have been two Triple Crown winners this century, American Pharaoh and Justify, and Secretariat was an ancestor of both of them. So obviously some greatness in that blood, and this is an incredible cover. It has been graded a total of 18 times, and there is a 9.8 in existence. Number 11, widely regarded as the greatest catcher of all time, this is Johnny Bench, and this is his first solo cover. So he did appear on one Sports Illustrated cover before this, but he was featured with several other players. He wasn't really the main feature in this one. He's obviously the only one on the cover, or he's he's the primary focus, and it is really awesome photography, really cool cover here. So this is from 1970. Johnny Bench appeared on a total of seven Sports Illustrated covers. He's a Hall of Famer, 14-time All-Star. He won two MVPs, 10 gold gloves, Two-time World Series champ, he won a World Series MVP, and he's number 29, 29 on ESPN's all-time greatest list. He was also the first catcher to lead the league in home runs, so he was both a great offensive and defensive catcher, which is really rare and hard to find. This issue has only been graded a total of three times, and the current leader is an 8.5. Into our top 10. At number 10, I love covers with multiple Hall of Fame athletes who are sharing both their first cover and that's what we have here. It's Oscar Robertson and it's Lou Hudson. Both of these guys are Hall of Famers. Both appeared on two Sports Illustrated covers, and this is their first appearance for each of them. This is from 1970. So Oscar Robertson, he's a Hall of Famer, 12-time All-Star. He won an MVP award. He won an NBA championship. He was a six-time assist champ. He's got the second most career triple doubles, now only behind Russell Westbrook, and he was the first player to average a triple double in a season. He comes in at number 11 on ESPN's all-time list. And Lou Hudson, he was a six-time All-Star with the Hawks, and he actually just recently got, into, uh, got inducted into the Hall of Fame as well. So a couple interesting facts about these guys. Oscar Robertson, was, he was a sophomore in high school in 1954. He starred on a Crispus Attux high school team that uh, lost in the state quarterfinals to eventual state champions Milan. And that was the story that later would uh, go on to be depicted in the 1986 classic movie of Hoosiers, that Milan team that beat Oscar's team. And so uh, the following year when Big O was a junior, his team dominated. They went 31-1. and one. They won the 55 state championship, which was the first for any all-black school in the nation. And then the following year, his senior year, they went 31-0, and 0, winning a second straight championship. Lou Hudson. So he shot right-handed. And his senior year in college, while he was playing at Minnesota, he broke his right hand and he had to miss seven games. But he actually came back and he played 17 games with the injury, averaging 19.8 points, 8.1 rebounds. And he did that all while shooting left hand while his right hand was in a cast. So that's pretty incredible. Also, speaking to how good of an athlete he was, he was also drafted by the Dallas Cowboys as a wide receiver in the 1966 draft. So Lou Hudson still holds a tie for the Hawks franchise record for most points in a single game with 57. 
And when he retired from the NBA, he was the 12th all-time leading scorer in NBA history. So this cover has only been graded a total of two times, and the current leader is an 8.5. Number nine, if we were to do a list of the coolest all-time covers, this one very well may end up at the top. This is Evil Knievel. This is 1974, the only time that Evil Knievel ever appeared on the cover of Sports Illustrated. So Evil Knievel was a stuntman. He was an entertainer. He's a folk hero. He's a cultural icon. He did all kinds of just crazy stunts, a lot of them involving motorcycles and jumps and just just, just insane stuff. So Evil Knievel dropped out of high school after his sophomore year, and he got a job in the copper mines as a diamond drill operator. He was fired whenever he made the earth mover do a motorcycle type wheelie and drove it into the city of Butte, Butte, Montana, their main power line, leaving the whole city without electricity for several hours. His real name is actually Robert Craig, but he got the nickname Evil Knievel after spending a night in jail in 1956 for reckless driving. In the same jail that night was a name uh, was a man named William Knoffel, and he had the nickname of uh, Awful. Uh, I guess it's Knoffel. I'm sorry, William Knoffel, and he had the nickname of Awful Knoffel, and so that's what led to Knievel. Um, adopting the nickname of Evil Knievel. So this cover actually depicts whenever Knievel was in front of the Snake River Canyon in Idaho. He wanted to jump the Grand Canyon, but the U.S. Department of Interior denied him the airspace over it. So let's actually read a couple paragraphs from this Sports Illustrated article that accompanied the cover. Staring down from the lip of the Snake River Canyon into the boiling green water below, one suddenly grasps the enormity of the whole operation, the absurdity, the arrogance, the awful, febrile, frightening, heroic lunacy of it. Very soon now, he is actually going to climb into that thing, and they're going to shoot him out over this great gash in the earth, and he is either going to live or he is going to die. There will be some 50,000 people right here watching him do it, and millions more watching on hundreds of closed-circuit television screens. They will stare with about the same comprehension as those cows and horses watching the trucks go by. The hoopla artists from TV will be babbling throatily about valor and danger and the six million bucks he has already pocketed, the usual dry cleaned obscenities of this age of excess. And for a long, loud moment, our hearts will seize up and we will watch the high arching trajectory, the trail of steam and shoots and wish that we could close our eyes. The whole notion of a canyon jump came to Robert Craig Knievel more than eight years ago. He had already invented the unlikely art of motorcycle jumping, leaping a bike across ever-widening rows of cars and trucks parked side by side between two ramps, an act accompanied by an ever-growing cacophony of applause and snapping bones. Today, with more than 300 jumps under his pegs, he has crashed 11 times to the tune of 50 separate fractures by his count, statistics that became more painfully credible when you watch his walk the crabbed, hip-stiff hobble of a landmine victim. Along the way, nurturing a talent for showmanship unequaled in the realm of American folk art since the days of Barnum and Buffalo Bill, he wrapped himself, as they say, in legend. Here he comes, one-time hubcap thief and bank robber, a hard-drinking, heartbreaking bar fighter, Montana mountain man, big spender, friend of the poor and downtrodden, Jesse James on two wheels says the first thing that comes to his head and it's always right takes no guff off no one star spangled leathers kidnapped his wife in order to marry her to hell with the fat cats 1000 a whole golf bets blows $5000 on free drinks for everyone in New Orleans don't give a dang what you say so long as you spell my name right that's evil with two e's super cool i usually don't go into that much detail for each individual cover but this one is so unique, I just really felt like I needed to paint a picture of what was going on. So this issue has only been graded nine times, and the current leader is a 9.2. Number eight, hop on board the Ryan Express. As the cover says, this is the great Nolan Ryan. This is his very first Sports Illustrated cover. This is from 1975. He appeared on a total of five covers throughout his career, and he is a Hall of Famer. He pitched 27 seasons, which is the most in MLB history. He was an eight-time All-Star. He's in the 300-win club. He's the all-time leader in strikeouts with 5,714. He's also the all-time leader in fewest hits allowed per nine innings with 6.56. He's got the most no-hitters in MLB history with seven. No one else even has more than four, and he's number 42 on ESPN's all-time greatest list. Another cool fact about Nolan Ryan, he's actually had his number retired by three different teams teams, the Angels, the Astros, and the Rangers, and he played for so long, he struck out seven pairs 
of fathers and sons. So very cool uh, cover here. It's been graded a total of 10 times and the leader is a 9.6. Number seven, it's Bears legendary running back, Walter Payton, sweetness. He appeared on six Sports Illustrated covers and this is his very first cover from 1976. Walter Payton, Hall of Famer, nine-time Pro Bowl. He won an MVP. He retired as the all-time leader in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. He's now second in rushing yards behind Emmitt Smith. He's now fifth in rushing touchdowns behind Emmitt Smith, LaDainian Tomlinson, Marcus Allen, and Adrian Peterson. But he is still one of the greatest running backs of all time. He also passed for eight touchdowns in his career, which I think is pretty cool. Um, really love this issue. Very collectible. And this issue has only been graded five times, with the current leader being a 9.0. Number six, look who it is again. It is Dr. J. Julius Irving. This is 1974, and this is his first Sports Illustrated cover. We've already seen his second on the list, and this is his very first. Once again, he's with the ABA Nets, and uh, in this one, he's doing what he's most known for doing. He is jamming it. Uh, Dr. J, one of the greatest dunkers of all time. We already talked about his accomplishments. We know he's an all-time great, but this is just a beautiful image. The fact that it's for his first cover, plus just the awesome photography, makes this one one of the best issues in all of the 1970s. It's only been graded a total of 16 times, and the current leader is a 9.2. Number five, it's another repeat athlete on our list, and once again, it is Hank Aaron. This is 1974. This is one of the most iconic Sports Illustrated covers of all time, 715. This was the moment whenever Hank Aaron passed Babe Ruth to become the all-time leader in career home runs. So let's talk about this a little bit. In 1973, whenever he was 39, Hank Aaron hit 40 home runs, and he finished the season at 713 career home runs, which is just one shy of Babe Ruth's uh, current record at the time. So he received a lot of death threats through hate mail during that entire 1973 season and then on to the offseason leading up to 1974. At the end of the 1973 season, Aaron received a plaque from the U.S. Postal Service for receiving more mail, 930,000 pieces, than any person excluding politicians. And uh, Babe Ruth's widow, Claire Hodgson, actually denounced all the racism and declared that her husband would have enthusiastically cheered Aaron's, uh, Hank Aaron's attempt at the record. So let's actually read a, a little snippet from what Sports Illustrated wrote about this moment. Is this to be the year in which Aaron, at the age of 39, takes a moonwalk above one of the most hallowed individual records in American sport? Or will it be remembered as the season in which Aaron, the most dignified of athletes, was besieged with hate mail and trapped by the cobwebs and goblins that lurk in baseball's attic. So that's really beautiful writing there from Sports Illustrated. And it just shows that even though this moment was almost 30 years after Jackie Robinson had uh, broken the color barrier, Hank Aaron was still facing lots of racism for breaking this record. So he actually tied Babe Ruth with 714 on April 14th in Cincinnati, on his very first swing of that 1974 season. And then he hit 715 in the following series on April 8th versus the Dodgers. And that was in Atlanta. And uh, the legendary Vin Scully was actually on the call since it was against the Dodgers. So uh, you can see in the classic video as he was rounding the bases after his 715th home run, two college students actually ran onto the field, which uh, kind of scared Hank for a moment. And they patted him on the back as he approached to round third base. So once again, one of the most iconic covers of all time. It's been graded 35 times and there is a 9.8 in existence. Number four, it doesn't get much bigger than this for soccer fans. It's Pele. This is his first cover. It's the only time he appeared on the cover of Sports Illustrated. This is from 1975. Pele, largely considered the greatest soccer player of all time. He won three FIFA World Cups. He's the only player to do so. He's the all-time leading scorer for Brazil with 77 goals in 92 games. Uh, he scored 1,279 goals in 1,363 club games, and he was named the Athlete of the Century in 1999 by the International Olympic Committee. Uh, also, FIFA actually recognized him as the greatest soccer player of all time. So a little background on the cover here. Pele had played 19 seasons with his club team Santos, and then he came to New York and he played with the New York Cosmos in the North American Soccer League for the 1975 season. 
there was so much excitement that uh, during his first public appearance in Boston, he was actually injured by a crowd of fans who had surrounded him and he had to be evacuated on a stretcher. But his debut took place on June 15th, 1975, and he scored a goal in a 2-2 draw versus the Dallas Tornado. And so this cover actually depicts that U.S. debut. And he ended up he ended up playing three seasons with the New York Cosmos, leading them to two soccer bowl championships until he retired at the age of 37. So really cool issue here. Pele is all time legend. And this issue is really, really rare for how collectible it is. There have only been five copies graded and the current leader is an 8.5. Coming in at number three, the Super Softs, Michigan State's classy Irvin Johnson. Once again, it's Magic Johnson, and this is his very first Sports Illustrated cover out of 29 times that he appeared on the cover. This is from 1978. Now, here's one thing that I think is sometimes really cool about the Sports Illustrated hobby. This issue came out several years before Magic Johnson's rookie card. This is this is basically the rookie card version of his magazine. But uh, once again, it came out in 1978. Magic Johnson's rookie card didn't come out until 1980. It also featured two other people on the card. But uh, this is this is pretty awesome. It predates his actual rookie card because it was his sophomore year with Michigan State. And just a really cool image of him uh, wearing a full suit and kind of, you know, acting like he's about to slam it there in the hoop. So Really collectible issue being Magic Johnson's first ever cover. We already talked about his accomplishments. We know he's an all-time great. This issue has been graded 15 times, and the current leader is a 9.6. Number two, once again, we have Magic Johnson. So this is actually his third Sports Illustrated cover, but it's his first pro cover. And it's really um, unusual, or it's, it's somewhat rare for a big-time athlete to not have their actual first cover be their most collectible. And to be honest, this issue is pretty much neck and neck with the previous one we saw with his actual first cover um, from 1978. But I just put this one a hair ahead of his first cover just because first pro cover has some significance, but also just the image uh, of this cover and uh, the font of the magic. This cover is just awesome. It screams to me 1970s. Um, it, it's kind of got like a disco feel to it. And, you know, Magic Johnson, it says uh, Irvin Johnson brings us back up tricks to L.A. Just this whole era, uh, you know, you've got Magic here uh, going up for the layup. And after this exact game, he was probably going to uh, the forum or the the lounge, whatever they called it. And he was probably, you know, with Jer Dr. Jerry Buss and they were dancing with women all night long. And that was kind of what was going on. And honestly, that's what this uh, that's what this font and this cover just screams to me. It just kind of is a throwback, very 1970s. And uh, I think it's one of the coolest covers out there. So coming in at number two, pretty much neck and neck with this first cover. But I'm just putting this one a hair ahead. Uh, this is from 1979. Once again, he appeared on 29 Sports Illustrated covers. And this was his rookie season with the Lakers. So he was drafted number one overall by the Lakers, playing aside, uh, alongside Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And in his rookie season, uh, he was still very young. He averaged 18 points, eight rebounds, and seven assists as a rookie. And he was actually a starter for the All-Star game. The Lakers went 60 and 22 that year, and they won the NBA Finals, defeating the Julius Irving-led 76ers. And as a rookie, Magic won Finals MVP. He's still the only rookie, uh, only rookie ever to win an NBA Finals MVP. So Love this cover. It's only been graded six times, and there is actually a 9.8 in existence. And here we go. The number one Sports Illustrated cover from the 1970s, it's Larry Bird. This is his very first Sports Illustrated cover. This is from 1977. And how about this? Two guys that dominated the NBA in the 80s, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, have pretty much dominated my countdown here for the top covers of the 70s. So they had the top three spots on this list, and they came in the top 20 a total of five times. But this first cover from Larry Bird is just awesome. Love the background colors. Love the Indiana State jersey. You got the cheerleaders up there. Um, college basketball secret weapon, Larry Bird. And we know what he went on to become. Uh, just an absolute all-time legend. So this cover was from the NCAA College Basketball Preview in 1977, 
in which Indiana State was ranked at number 17 preseason. And this cover was heading into Larry's second season with Indiana State. He had averaged 33 points and 13 rebounds in his first season. And in his three years at Indiana State, he actually led the Sycamores to an overall record of 81 and 13. And as we know, and as we've already mentioned, uh, he finished as the NCAA runner-up in 1979 with Indiana State because they were defeated by Magic Johnson um, and uh, and Michigan State. So once again, love this cover. Number one, most collectible, most potentially valuable in all of the 1970s. This has been graded as of today a total of 29 times, and there is a 9.6. That's it. Be sure to check out my other countdown list, and please comment, like, subscribe. And until the next video, see you guys next time.